Hi everybody, it's been a little while since my last video and disclaimer, this one's gonna be a little bit longer but we'll just say that I'm making up for last week. I know that I missed. Um, but I have some other stuff to share other than just the Bible study itself. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump into that and then I'll share uh, some things at the end of the video. So be sure to stick around for, uh, for that. Um, Today I wanted to take some time and talk about John chapter 4. Um, my wife has been reading through a book and um, in one of the chapters that she was reading, it talked about the woman at the well and that's, that's the story in John 4. And it's one of my favorite stories. I'm prone to the books in the Bible that are more narrative based. Uh, so I love the Gospels. Obviously it's the story and the life of Jesus. But this particular incident also has this woman at a well and her reputation precedes her. That's why she comes at a different time. That's why she's uh, alone with the exception of Jesus when she arrives. Uh, but the thing that I really want to focus in on, because I could really do an entire sermon and take 15, 20, 30 minutes talking about the woman at the well and breaking that down, uh, I, I want to point out really what, uh, what Christine read about um, in this book. And, and she shared it with me and it jumped out at me as well. And it's one of my favorite stories in the book of John um, as it is. So uh, I want to talk about the woman of the well at the well, how it was a divine appointment, but also how she used her mess for God's message. Um, Jesus told her everything about her and that's what secured for her that he was the Messiah. That's, that's what made her realize and decide, uh, you know what, I'm talking to the Messiah. I've got to go tell everybody. And she was vulnerable, she was raw, she was candid about who she was, and her reputation was already known. That's why she arrived at the well when she did. She wanted to be away from people, but on encountering Jesus and meeting Jesus, immediately something switched in her. And her desire to avoid at all costs was gone. And now, all of a sudden, she wanted to be around all these people and let them know who she had run into. It didn't take away that she was ashamed of her past. It didn't take away that her reputation uh, was, was really a mess or that she was wrong in her lifestyle and in her life choices. But all of that mess, all of that wrong, all of that brokenness paled in comparison to the person that she had just met in Jesus. And so she went and she used her mess as a message. And it's just an amazing story how she runs to the town and she says, I think I've met the Messiah. Uh, as you get closer towards the end of the chapter in John 4, she goes to the town, the people that she's been trying to avoid for who knows how long. And she encounters all of them and she lays it all out on the table. And she says, look, I know my life is a mess, but in spite of the mess, I've met the guy that I think is the Messiah. He told me everything that he knew about me. And they already knew about her. They already knew her story. But for her to be able to use her story to point to Jesus, uh, it just, it's such, it's such a, a testament to the power of Christ in our lives by just a simple encounter with Jesus, how it can change us. And so I'm sitting here at the old mill in North Little Rock uh, with with water and with this beautiful weather around me and uh, it's reminded me even more of that story and how just our lives circumstances um, can allow us to to point others to Jesus good or bad broken or cleansed no matter what it may be we can point people to Jesus with our lives if we will allow him to use us in that way if we will allow him to change us. And ultimately, that's really the purpose, right? Is for him to change those things about us, to change our lives. And uh, so I wanna challenge you in your brokenness, in your hurt, uh, whether it's consequences that you're, you're suffering or you're experiencing, or whether it is um, simply circumstances in your life that have you down. Um, it's, it's brokenness that you're experiencing from the outside. Uh, maybe it's emotional hurt, whatever the case is. Use those stories for Jesus. Use your life for Jesus. Point people to Jesus in spite of those things in your life. Because after all, this life isn't really what it's all about. 
It's about an eternal life with Him someday in heaven. And that should be the grand adventure that our lives are all about anyway. No matter what happens in the here and now, life can be just traumatic. Life can be hard. Life could potentially not get better for us in this life on this earth. But ultimately, if we'll put our faith and trust in Him, we can have a better life in eternity. Not just a better life, the best life. So I just want to challenge you with that. Um, allow your life to be used to point others to Jesus. Let your life be a story about Him. Thanks for listening. I do want to share just a couple of things. Again, I know I missed last week. Um, not sure if I'm going to catch up on that or not. But I did have a friend reach out to me and ask if I would be willing to do maybe something that's a little bit more topically or series-based. So if you have any advice or if you have any suggestions or requests, please let me know. Leave them in the comments or hit me up uh, through a message or a text or, or whatever the case is. Um, but the next probably three to four of these video Bible studies I'm going to do are going to center around family and marriage and what the Bible has to say about that and just coming from a very practical perspective as well as a biblical perspective see what what God's Word says about it so if you have any of those kinds of suggestions again this this particular one today was based off of something that what my wife shared with me during her devotional time and uh, it really hit home and again it's one of my favorites so I really was encouraged to do that and looking forward to this to this moment to be able to record so um, like I said if you've got any suggestions or requests let me know and I can't guarantee that they'll get done but uh, I'll do my best after all this is not only for my own benefit but I also want to be want it to be for yours and for you to really experience um, God's Word hopefully in a very alive kind of way so um, thank you for watching thanks for putting up with the little bit of extra length on this one not too terribly long uh, but thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you soon